So I'm here with the one and only uh, Connor Manon. Connor, it's so lovely to meet you. Thanks so much for joining us on the show. Lovely to meet you too. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited about this interview. So I was raving to my friends. I was like, you don't even want to know who I'm interviewing. Like there's this human, his name's <laughs> Connor Manon. This, he's amazing, like his voice. Because I remember you, we saw you on YouTube. We saw you, for me, it was Facebook. Like a lot of your YouTube videos would, would end up in Facebook. Yeah. And I would spend hours watching your challenges, watching all those sort of things. So talk to me about the the beginning of your stardom, beginning of your career. Yeah, I mean, it, it kind of started by, yeah, kind of social media. I started by posting videos online. And you were right, it actually originally was Facebook because it first started where I would post videos on Facebook so that my like friends and family could see it and like people I knew from school or whatever. I feel like the only way I can find out if I'm actually any good is if I get the opinion of people that have like that don't know me. Yeah, you know I mean? people that yeah. have, <laughs> have never met me have no problem telling me that I'm terrible. Where did it all begin? Like in terms of your singing career specifically, like your vocal range, was it like you woke up one day in the shower at four and you were like, sing dirty to me? You know, I don't know. I don't, I don't know really, I don't really know. I feel like, it, like I think from quite a young age, my parents clocked that I was obviously quite into music. I was, I think they realized that I enjoyed it and they, and they obviously are big music lovers as well. Um, but I, I actually wanted to be an actor. That was what I, that was what yeah, I wanted to be. So I wanted. To, I went to a drama uh, school part time. I'd go on the weekends and I'd attend these drama classes, and then um, singing kind of just kind of came into it naturally, just by through performing, I guess. And then I don't really know where like like the kind of uniqueness of the book. I don't really know where that came from. I feel like maybe luck. <laughs> I don't yeah. Know, I guess it, some like, divine like, intervention um, somewhere. <laughs> I know I never said. We have a thing called the story behind. Yeah. I would like to delve into your brand new single, If I Ever, uh, and go not line by line, but I'm going to give you a couple of lines, feed you a couple of lines, and I want you to tell me about the experience behind that, why you wrote that, why you wanted to put that into a song. So let's start yeah. with this. You, your, I don't know, your producer says to you, your manager says to you, okay, it's time for a new single. What do you got? Where do you start for you? Um, well, actually, this song and pretty much most of the songs that are going to follow it uh, soon all stemmed from a breakup at the end of last year. Um, around, I think it was like, yeah, right at the beginning of November. So, annoyingly, right before my birthday, which is great. But, um, oh, sorry. I, uh, <laughs> I experienced kind of, it's hard to say breakup because it, like, what, what me and, 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 and this girl were was, was kind of, uh, kind of blurry, but at the same time, it was kind of a difficult parting ways. And, um, I once it kind of came to an end and I definitely didn't foresee it happening. It was a massive shock to me and it was kind of a massive, um, you know, kind of horrible situation to suddenly find myself in. I kind of learned throughout my life that every time I kind of reach uh, a difficult phase in my in my life, uh, music seems to be the thing that it's very easy to just kind of just sit and do nothing and, and, yeah. and wallow in your sadness. And I kind of uh, mentioned to one of my, my, my close friends, uh, his name's Brendan Buckley, and he's uh, he's also a producer. And I, I honestly, he had a job. I, I said to him, bro, I want you to quit your job. <laughs> I said, quit your job. And he was like, you got it. So we quit his job. <laughs> and um, <laughs> we got in the studio and I started writing about everything that happened and and my version of events, I guess. And if I'm ever singing where you are, I pray you won't show up. Cause I can better see you again. Every time I listen to it, I'm like, this gets more deep and deep. And and those who have gone through breakups, I know for myself, it's like, it's a really, it's like a tragic time and your life becomes a tragedy and you can hear that through the lyrics. So I want to delve into just, just, just a couple of lines. So one of my favorites. So if I ever call you when I'm drunk, promise you won't pick up because I don't want to do this again. And if I'm ever singing where you are, I pray you won't show up. Those are, those are painful lines. Talk to me about that. Yeah, so, um, the first, the first half of the chorus, if 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 I'm honest, I feel like I'm actually very good at not doing that. A lot of people, a lot of friends, a lot of people, um, you know, when they kind of if they drink a little bit too much, they end up reaching out to their ex or whatever. I'm actually, I've always been very, very good at kind of not doing that and not, and yeah. not checking <laughs> social media and not getting and not getting sucked into 
anything like that. So that that line, I, I feel like I'm I'm quite safe on that. But obviously the line still stands. But the the second line, which mm. is that if I'm ever singing where you are, I pray you won't show up, is actually a really direct line, um, kind of to her because literally the last thing she ever said to me when when like uh, in in uh, kind of messages when it kind of was all over and and. and and she left my apartment and then she sent her final message. And the last thing she ever said was, oh, well, you know, I, I hope I still see you in the city uh, next mm. year, because this was in November, she was like, next year. And I couldn't believe that she said that. I couldn't believe that in her mind, it was like, oh, you know, well, hopefully I'll still see you next year. And I was, her, I was like, no, I, I never I never want to see you again. Like, <laughs> yeah. like I think in my head, I was like, if, if, it's, if it's over, like I have no, I, I, you know, at least I need, I, I definitely need a, whole lot of time to kind of process this and, and get over it and I think that yeah. seeing as that was the last thing she ever said it was kind of this fear of mine that she would actually show up and it would obviously mm. like throw up completely of the of the of the show and the performance so I put that line in there to kind of be like ah oh, I know that you said you hopefully you hopefully see me but in my head I'm like yeah. I really hope that does Are you still in the healing process? Because I know the one line says, I'm still broken hearted. I won't forget when I've barely covered the scars that you left. Obviously, I believe the communication is such an important factor of any relationship. And, and, and that stands for like during the relationship and the end, even if it's reaching the end, you kind of, you know, you need to be very articulate and explain kind of why, um, why, why things are happening the way it's happening to the other person. If you, you know, if you, so if you choose to decide um, that you want it to end. And I wasn't given that, in my opinion. I kind of wasn't given that explanation. I wasn't given that kind of clarity over what um, what was happening. And I think for me, the difficulty with that is it's massively elongated the healing process because at the same time, I'm not only trying to get over it, but also figure out what the hell went wrong. For trying to why. understand, yo, well, what did yeah. I do wrong? Yeah. yeah, exactly. And I think for me, that's kind of, yeah, why I put that line in there is that like, I can foresee that it's going to take a very long time to completely be over it when 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 I don't really understand what kind of happened and, and why it happened the way it did. I, I can just say from your South African fans from 5FM, we wish you all the healing in the world. I know you you, you sort of very mentioned and you're going to announce that uh, you're going on this big tour and I wish you luck. I hope she doesn't show up, uh, quite frankly. <laughs> yeah. uh, but, we'll, but we'll take a listen to the song and, and really enjoy it. We'll we'll throw this everywhere, the story behind yet again. Um, you are a champion and I think you speak so honestly. So thank you for that. Uh, that, that that's really special. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you very much. Oh.